Hey, hi, teach. Okay, now we have this equation, but the question comes, um, how can I get a formulation from here, right? So when you look at this equation, it's a derivative equation, right? Differential, uh, there's some derivatives, dn over dt. Mm -mm. So in any kind of sense, if you want to, so I want to get rid of this and I want to know what, how does the, the sample n changes over the time. So I have to obtain some sort of function that mm -hmm. gives me, you know, the, the change uh, in any time for n. So if there's a, you know, a derivative, I have to get rid of using something called anti-derivative. Isn't, isn't it quite natural? Mm -hmm. you know, if, if you want to get rid of division, you have to multiply. Yeah, you know? yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Just want to, I also want to clarify this one here. So yeah. this one here says that the change in n is uh, out of the change in time, which is a ratio is dependent on the negative constant, which is the breakdown, uh, multiplied by the n itself. Right. All right, I'm getting it. The reason why we are doing this, again, remember that I, in here, I put a proportionality. It is basically, I am saying, dn over dt is the proportional to n, but I don't know how proportional. So how we much. have, mm -hmm. so we have that lambda so negative. With all those dependencies, all those proportionality, I just assume engineering. I assume that it is proportional to as much as minus lambda. Okay, cool. And that's why I could change this lambda to the equal sign. You know, mm. that's that's the important part. Okay, I'm glad you uh, you saw that because that's very important. Mm. So when we do that, like I mentioned, um, we have to get rid of this uh, d. So mm -hmm. in order to do that, we can use the anti-derivative. What is an anti-derivative? It is the opposite. Integrals, yeah. right? Integer so integration. To, integrate we have to integrate it and integration and derivation can cancel each other out mm. so i can actually get it however this formulation is still not good enough i have to sort of separate these variables because you see here we have dn and dt but they are not the same so i cannot really solve them in the same uh, equation but the good thing about math you can do any kind of operation on both sides of the equation yes right? yes as long as you you know, you do one thing to the one side, you can do the same thing to the other side. That's yes. what I, basically what I did here with yes. the integral. Yes. I the integral of both sides and that's that's perfectly normal because I change both sides equally same. Mm -hmm. In here, I want to do something else. Uh, I want to divide the first part dt, mm -hmm. right? Uh, multiply it, sorry. And then I, I just want to separate this dn here and dt. So okay. let's just rewrite it. Okay? Sure. And in here, and there's also n here, right? I want to send this n here. So uh, integral 1 over n dn equals to integral uh, minus lambda dt. Okay. Did you see what I did here? You, di I you divided the left-hand side with yes. the n one. that was on the right-hand side. And yes. on the right-hand side, you multiplied the dt, which yes. was a opposite, which is, was div a division on the left hand side. So you yeah. kind of layman terms, you brought this over here and you right. brought this over here. A shortcut for students mm -hmm. that if you don't want to deal with, oh, I'm going to divide both sides with this, I'm going to multiply both sides with that. You don't need to. Yeah. Just send this one to this side and send that one. Send this one to this side. Yeah. And you don't have to deal with all this, but I'm pretty sure math teachers are getting angry if you do so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, well, they have to understand the logic behind it first, you know. For sure. <laughs> but if you do it, if, if you do it, you know, so many times, it kind of gets cumbersome and you have to just, you know, uh, do it. Absolutely. Okay, this is already looking good because now I completely separated my variables. So the left-hand side depends on dn and the right-hand side depends on dt. dt. So this is kind of so much easier to solve now. In uh, solving uh, integrals, we call this method the separation of variables. Separation yeah. of the variables, okay. Yeah, so it is it is so much easier to to put the same things on one side and the other same things on the other side. Mm. So it's, it's going to be so much easier. Mm. And 
this actually one over n dn is a special function right so like i said how you can get the integral of this you have to think reverse mm -hmm. what was it before it was you know uh derived uh, before it was the you know differentiation and this is actually the differentiation of the natural logarithm n okay i will explain it in a bit mm. so let's just let Long me just write n. it here okay this ln is here called natural logarithm mm. okay and as you know we all have numbers right mm -hmm. and it, these numbers can also be represented in logarithmic form for example the numbers that we use from you know one to ten mm -hmm. they are actually the logarithmic numbers of ten meaning that if you get ten here this is the base of this logarithm it is ten it's mm -hmm. based on logarithm ten and in here you can uh, you can actually find this so all of our numbers will be this one is equal to one mm -hmm. and all of our numbers can be defined in the logarithmic format as well right mm. so, there is one special number called e, which is equal to 2.71 roughly. Mm -hmm. This is an earlier number, a very famous mathematician, and I'm not sure if you can call it just mathematician, but uh, 2.71 that's denoted for him. And if the base is e, then we have a special name for it. It is called ln. Okay. okay. So uh, from now on, I will be referring to this ln, which means the, it's called the natural natural logarithm of a number okay mm -hmm. and so since you are taking an integral and then as you know we need some boundaries here but i don't have it so for that i'm going to assume that these boundaries just give me some sort of constant okay what it is it doesn't matter okay because if i have the exact uh, lower limit and the high, upper limit of this integral i could exactly know what this constant is but at the moment i don't Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. That's the whole point of these derivations. You always have to rely on, you know, uh, your senses. Mm -hmm. And this one is equal to, and as I told you, lambda is some sort of professional, uh, proportional constant. Okay. Right? So the integral doesn't do anything to the constant, so it can just go through. However, the dt here, the mm -hmm. variable, uh, the, the integral of it is equal to t. Yes. So, out of integral, it comes out as minus lambda t. However, the same thing happens in here too. So I have another constant. Mm -hmm. Let's call it t two. Okay. 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 This is already looking great. So I just have to get rid of this natural logarithm and then just leave the n alone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I can do some more operations here. Let me just do it quickly. I just threw the c one here. It becomes a or negative c one. C1. It subtracts you one from both sides, right? Mm. Yep. So let's just call it C3 is equal to C2 minus C1. Okay. So when you do that, and then I can single out the equation saying that ln n equals to minus lambda t mm -hmm. plus C3. Three. Okay. This is great. And I also do want to get rid of this natural logarithm. What can I do here to cancel out the natural logarithm? Um, <laughs> um, Remember, we have to do the same thing in the both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. If I take the... Divide by E. Exponential. Yes. <laughs> if I take the power of this both sides with E, then it becomes ln E equals to E to the Oh. minus lambda t plus 3. So the reason why I did that because the just like in here, you know, we, as we pointed out here, the, if the base number and the, the number is same, they cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the same thing is going to happen here. This e and the, an invisible e here will cancel each other out. So I will only have any. I was aiming for e. So that is good because I want to just have that, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just continue. And in here, then I have the n is equal to e to do minus lambda t. Is there another way of writing the exponentials when it comes to, you know, uh, separating them? So in here, 
you know, this e to the minus lambda t plus 3. If I separate these, how can I write them? Uh, plus e to the power 3. Hmm. Yes, it multiplies e to the, uh, you know, c3. Mm -hmm. However, this is still a constant, right? Yes. I, I still don't know what it is. So uh, I can still carry on and I can just call it, let's just call it c4. Okay. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm just trying to make it always simple for me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's very important, right? So yep. the final equation that I have here, n is equal to c4 times uh, e to the minus lambda t. Okay, mm. this is looking good. I, I already like that. So, however, I want to know what this c4 is. Yeah. How can I find out? Then you gotta go all the way to the front and start working it through. <laughs> well, well the one way you find out that you know if there's an unknown in the equation, it means I have to give me some 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 sort of conditions. Mm -hmm. That's so you can find it out. But we don't know anything about this, but we know something. You know, this sample initially we know its value. In the beginning, when I say in the beginning, I mean when time is equal to zero. Okay. Um, this nt or n0 will be equal to it is initial amount, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And usually the initial amounts in mathematics we uh, represent it using n naught. Yeah. Okay. So this this means actually this has a, a name in math. It is called the initial condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it is very important because it helps you to find out these unknowns. So, since this is a function, from now on it's so much easier. Just plug it. Just put t equals zero and then see what happens. Okay. If I put t equals to zero and my equation becomes n zero is equal to c4 times e to do minus lambda times zero, zero. Okay, and e to the zero is equal to n zero, which is one. Right? Okay, and in here, what I said before, n zero here is equal to n naught. Okay, and so it means I my constant here c four is actually equal to my initial amount, mm -hmm. whatever I have. So when I put here now this function is actually going to make sense so much more sense to you, okay? Let's just look at it this way. n0 and not e to the minus lambda t. Okay, so when you look at this equation, this is the beauty of math because math actually gives you, a, a, it represents the real life, you know, situation, it replicates. Mm -hmm. So in here, at the time zero, if I put zero to time, what is it equal to, this nt? The initial state. Yeah, it is equal to, because in the beginning it was the initial thing. It yeah. was the only thing, right? Yep. If I just go one second further, what happens? One second later. Yeah. When I put, instead just here, I have to put now one, right? So then this becomes n, n1 is equal to n naught divided by e to the lambda times 1, right? So, doesn't matter, even if the slightest fraction of time, if I put it here, it is gonna be less than the initial amount, the mm. first amount, mm -hmm. right? Why? Mm. Because of this negative. Mm. It comes down to division and then now, as the time goes by, your initial sample has to get smaller and smaller. Less and less. And that's that's the beauty of math. Do you see how intuitive it is? Yeah. It just, it just immediately tells you, okay, your math is correct because you cannot put a negative time. You cannot mm -hmm. do what was it in, in minus two seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. in minus ten years. You, you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So you have to put positive numbers. And when you put positive numbers, every number, this the division part will increase, mm -hmm. that resulting a smaller number of the sample. That's right. exactly what the half-life is, okay? Right. So, it will be so much easier. I really recommend everyone watching this video or whenever they are doing a, a derivation, it will be so much easier to see it in a graph. 